So, um, we have a brand new audio setup on my end. Um, you've just moved. I did. I it is it is nine thirty p.m. where I am. You've just you. That is very weird. Yep. You've you've just moved all the way across the country to yeah. scenic Colorado. And you have no microphone yet. I have no microphone. Uh, I'm in a big empty room. Our stuff arrives tomorrow. We've been here since last Monday night. Um, we went out Tuesday and immediately bought a bed. And we've pretty much been living with two office chairs and a bed for a week. So we're really excited to have what, our stuff. What took so long? They got to drive it all cross country. And I guess, I don't know. Like, I don't know if they move multiple things at a time or if they yeah, just. They, they store things and then they move them here. So Yeah. Or I don't know if the guys aren't allowed to drive for more than a certain amount of hours a day or how it works. But we were given a window of one to two weeks. So it's coming on the early side. Thank goodness. Because I am pretty over having a bed i i could not do i could i i would not could not in a fox i would not could not with a box i no for, it's for been two. a challenge well your desk or tv trays yeah we have my computer on a tv tray that we bought at target <laughs> just so we'd have a surface to put things on because we have literally like in the bedroom there is a bed and we're using our suitcases for bedside tables. Downstairs in the living room, there were our two office chairs and a cat tower that we bought the night we got here. Just to give them something to do. Yeah. We, we packed the car with mostly their stuff. So, like, there's and, and nothing. After you sat in your suitcase, stared at you and peed. Yeah. We, it was a three-night drive. By night two... Well, it was a three-day drive. By by day two, Peggy was fucking done. And when we arrived in the hotel the second night, Peggy popped a squat in the suitcase, looked us in the eye, and peed. <laughs> well, yeah, and and people were like, she she was she was doing it because she was mean. No, 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 no. She was doing no. that because it was full of stuff that smelled like home. Cat, that's how cats express stress. Yeah. Like we had litter boxes set up for them and everything, but cats express stress in all kinds of ways. Like Simba was tearing up the hotel room with the scratching and Dottie we had to keep in the crate because she wedged herself into a six inch by six inch spot under the hotel bed that we had a lot of trouble getting her out of. Like we thought they were gonna have to cut the bed open. Cats deal with the stress in a lot of different ways. Peeing is one of them. And then the last day Peggy just sang to us pretty much all day. Like every hour for about 15 minutes, Peggy would just cry. See, and I, she, I, yeah, I, and she, Dan had this like straw cowboy hat that Peggy just, Peggy took it all out on that hat. That hat is dead. I am so cheap and stubborn that I, my, I would have gone to Target. I would have gotten an inflatable mattress and a blanket and that's it. We did that. We did that for the first night. That is what we did for the first night. And then couldn't take it. And then we I could. Back. I could take it I because I am very stubborn and very cheap. Well, we what we decided to do, we have got a bigger bedroom here, so we upgraded to a king bed for us. And we're huh. putting the queen bed we had in the old house into the guest room. Okay. So we were gonna get a new bed anyway. Uh, fair enough. So, you know. All right. So you are settled. You're getting settled. Stuff is arriving. The first time in my life I have lived in a different time zone. It's weird. Yeah, get used to it. You get used to it. That's what I'm told. Yeah. I haven't yet. You will. It's but uh, yeah, time. we're getting settled. All right, let's let's get the intro going because we have horrible things this week. Oh, good. Each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, someone waited a lifetime for this exact circumstance to happen. 
they they waited and they waited and they waited. Someone at the AP was was just I, I bet this person's been there 50 years. And yet, finally, their time has come. <gasps> oh. Trucker loses trailer of 38,000 pounds of marbles on I-465. And the first line of the story. This is the culmination of someone's life and career, Tara. Would you like to read it? Would you like to read the high point that will never be, be met again? Can I? Go ahead. A trucker has lost his marbles in the Indianapolis area. They waited a lifetime. I would be so excited if I got assigned this story. Yeah. You're like, this is why I went to J school. Uh, state police tell TV station WXIN that a truck carrying 38,000 pounds of marbles lost its trailer Saturday on southbound Interstate 465. The marbles were on the shoulder and in the median. They're all green. That's strange. Well, no, I, I'm not sure. Well, I think they make them like that. They make them all one color for certain batches. But... Oh. You know, Maybe the, they were like those marbles you put in vases. It's true. It's possibly that. Um, there were no injuries, but a lane of traffic in the area was affected by the cleanup during much of the day. I, I just, good God. This is the dream. The journalism dream. <laughs> this is also a good visual representation of what it was like in our rental car by the third day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we, we had all fucking had it. I just... It, and we were driving through western Kansas, which if you've ever been to western Kansas, there's nothing there. No, there's nothing there. Nothing. It looks like a fucking dystopian movie. If you, if you get lucky in western Kansas, the weather will turn sour and the sky will do amazingly horrible things just so you have something to look at. Otherwise, everything's pretty much brown. Yeah. Yeah. Including all the food. <laughs> but Jesus Christ, that is... How do you clean that up? I, I, do you I, just I get know. like... Do you get like 50 dudes out there with 50 shop vacs just sucking them up or... Just release a bunch of cats? <clears throat> Well, that'll just disperse them over a larger area. <laughs> yeah, how do you clean that? I don't even know. I mean, I would say just clean the ones up off the road and... Call, call the rest of it done? Yeah, the ones that landed in the in the grassy median? Fuck it. Well, normally if it la if a marble lands outside the bounds, you get to keep it. That That's, that's how it works. No, rest gets to keep it. <laughs> Oh, all right. Um, now we get into more of our regular fare from floor. I, oh my God. We have often, it's, it's, it keeps happening. We tell people that 911 is not customer service. But what, what astounds me is how people keep coming up with new and, and amazing ways to abuse it. This is totally new. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Florida woman arrested for asking 911 how to file for divorce. Wow. Okay. <laughs> A Largo woman was arrested Friday for misusing 911 by calling and texting the number to make non-criminal uh, non -criminal complaints about her husband. Uh, please say Sylvia Shoemaker, 69, yikes, Used 911 multiple times via text and phone to ask for things like a counselor and how to file for divorce. Now, you know how she was doing this, right? She had the phone up and she was like, I'm asking them right now how to file. You look, Harold. You look. I'm asking them. That's, I'm serious about this. Well, look at that mugshot. She's, she's like, I got away from the motherfucker, didn't I? I mean, <laughs> I can think of several scenarios where this could be an emergency. 
She doesn't look like she was in any of them. No. Shoemaker, she doesn't look particularly distraught. No. Shoemaker was reportedly, quote, highly intoxicated when being questioned by the police. <laughs> Maybe it was her husband that really needed 911. Maybe. Uh, is it just me or does she look like she's a Chablis sort of drunk? Maybe yeah. a rosé. <laughs> rosé all day. Now she she looks like I, I, I got away from him, didn't I? This shit I worked, right? I talked to the manager. I told him <laughs> that I would talk to the manager. And I did. <laughs> Yeah, right. someone in the channel said, who is it? Um, Michael's asking the channel, how do you get to 69 and not know what 911 is for? <sighs> Dude, our president is 70. And look at all the shit he doesn't know. Yeah. You can get to any age and not know anything. And that's the American dream. Yeah. Especially if you're an entitled drunk white lady. You, you can... In America, you do not have to learn a goddamn thing you don't want to. That's freedom. That is freedom, yes. I can be as dumb as I want. America. <sighs> Trump is 70. Actually, I think he's 71. 73. Oh, well, okay. He's older and he knows less. So, yeah. you know, living the dream. Um, This is, we have, we have a... a uh, a break in this week that is just to bless your heart because everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And I'm just like, I, I can't feel, I'm not even mad at, at them. I can't, I just feel sorry. I just feel sorry when, when you see this. Um, when break ins go wrong, alleged crooked nabbed in British Columbia, uh, trapped in British Columbia store, then nabbed by police. Um, yeah, they, oh my, oh, bless your heart. Um, Surveillance video captured Saturday shows a man smashing the glass, the front door, the cell clinic in Surrey, British Columbia. Next, the apparent crook tries to desperately push through a security gate. The gate bows and flexes until the man is finally able to slide underneath. Once in the store, he appears to realize all the pricey merchandise of the shop has been removed. So look, what he's here. There he is. He gets under it. All the cases are empty. Yep. So all, all the good shit's not there. When alarm With alarm bells ringing and time running out, he decides to bolt, but he can't get out. Where's where's the bit? Where, he's trying to get out. And where's the... He got stuck. There, stuck. Yeah. Um, owner Peggy Burnt was... Uh, Burned, burnt, uh, was alerted that someone had tried to break in. Watch the incident unfold through a security app on her mobile phone. Um, the hooded man is seen in the video trying to slip back under the gate, but getting stuck. Pulls violently on the fencing, but it won't give. Of the gate that trapped the alleged crook, she said that every time there's an attempt at theft, she learns from it. Uh, video shows a man frantically looking around, presumably for a key to open the gate. He was just in panic mode. How did he get under it the first time, but not the second time? Well, okay, it's all in the way it was angled. Okay, if 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 it's at a slant like this, even with the little sharp edges, if they're a slant like this, you can go under, but try to get back. It's like barbs. Oh yeah, okay. Because because it has to in order to get back the other way, it would have to flex this way, right? And it can't. So it's trying to. It, you're yeah. So. Bless, okay, everything that could have gone wrong here went wrong. Honey. First, you break in, you desperately wiggle your way. You, you pull the limbo game under the security <laughs> fence. And when you get in, you realize, wait a second, where's all them iPhones? Yeah. Uh-oh. Man, there isn't even a Galaxy S in here. This is bullcrap. I'm one of those exploding ones. Yeah. And then you try to leave. And then it's like, well, okay, oh, I'll go back the way I came. And then and then just, it didn't. And much like a cell phone contract, getting in is much easier <laughs> than getting out. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, good God. I mean, like, at least he didn't get trapped in the ceiling or something. True, but it just... I... This is one of those how hard could it be kind of dudes, you know? Yeah. Let's steal and stuff from the store. How hard could that be? It's right there. You just go in and get it, right? How hard could that be? Oh, there's a little bit. There's a there's a wall thingy, but it's like a fence. You can get under that. How hard could it be? Yeah, I mean, this, this this is not like rocket science, right? But it does take some planning, apparently. It does. Yes. I can, and I, the, the whole idea of having a security app so you can watch as your place is being burgled. That, I mean, I should probably get one set up here in the house just in case. But I know if it ever goes off, I will lose my freaking mind. We have that, the new house has one of those video doorbells. Uh, you got a yeah. ring one. Is it yeah. from Amazon? Yeah. No, don't hook that up. So far, we're just using it as a doorbell, which is nice to have because our old house didn't have a doorbell. So um, I don't know how much of the video feature we'll use, but so far, it's just nice to have a doorbell. Dude, you can get a wireless doorbell from Home Depot for like 25 bucks. Yeah, it, they actually, the old owner left the regular old analog doorbell for us if we wanted to hook that back up. But right now we have the ring. You, you don't, you get the ring, you die in five days, hook it back up. You're making me sad. It was seven days. Whatever. Hook it back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we have the thermostat that you have to control through an app on your phone. So like oh, we couldn't God. turn the heat up. Switch that out too. What are you doing? We couldn't turn the we didn't know. Like we didn't physically stand in this house before we bought it. Our realtor did a FaceTime tour with us. So the first night we're like freezing and we're like, oh, it's a nest. We don't have internet yet. We can't turn up the heat until we get internet. That's rip that out of the wall and go get you one that's not on the internet. Yeah. Those are the, and also Ring is not being updated anymore because Google stopped updating them. Ring or Nest? Ring. I know Nest, Name Nest. Video? Ring is Amazon. Yeah. In any event, rip those out. They're terrible. Don't put them in your house. I know. We have a robot house now. You have a horrible robot house. Speaking of terrible things, this is this is one of the signs of I, I guess the apocalypse. I guess. This 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 is I don't know what to make of this. Um let me get you the story here, because this is just what? This um National Weather Service warns of falling iguanas. Oh, yeah, I saw this. Coldest air of the season spreads across the eastern U.S. Uh, even some southern states are feeling the chill. From Louisiana to the Carolinas, even down through Florida, temperatures are averaging 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Uh, freeze warnings and hard freeze warnings are in effect in Florida and Georgia through Wednesday morning. Um, the National Weather Service in Miami issued a rare forecast regarding cold temperatures, but it was for iguanas. Yes, you read that correctly. Don't be surprised if you see iguanas falling from the trees tonight, tweeted the Miami Weather Service office. Concern for people in South Florida is that these iguanas often sleep in trees, so when their bodies go dormant, they appear to fall from the sky onto streets, cars, pools, or even people walking around. And since iguanas are large, males can reach five feet in length and weigh up to 20 pounds. This can be dangerous if one lands on top of you. The invasive species can't handle cold temperatures very well because they're cold-blooded. General, iguanas tend to get sluggish or lethargic once the temperature drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But yeah, if you guys want to feel what going insane is probably like, it's called Color Out of Space, and it's a movie based on a Lovecraft story with Nicolas Cage. Well, speaking of the cold temperatures, uh, it does have a knock-on effect, and that knock-on effect is stupidity. Um, also from Florida. I hope not, because I just moved to a cold place. St. Pete man sets fire to apartment to keep warm. Oh, no. <laughs> Pinellas County, a St. Petersburg man was arrested Tuesday morning for setting fire inside his apartment. 
to stay warm. Mark O'Krent, 66. What is it with people, older people this week? Was charged with arson in the first degree after he allegedly set fire to a stack of paperwork in his apartment around 3 a.m. According to the St. Petersburg Police Department, the flames were large enough to set off the smoke detectors, causing a response from the fire department. Okrent lives in a 30-unit building, uh, and residents were home during the incident. No one was injured. Okrent had several options available to him through neighbors and owners of the building to stay warm. I mean, on the one hand, this is kind of sad, because if he didn't have heat, that is terrible. Well, it's it's in place. What that's part of what this cold is being a mess of because it's yeah. it's showing up in places where people don't have heat because they don't need it most of the time. Right. But this is not the way. Yeah, and uh, what was oh yeah, someone in the channel had a great idea. Um, if you're that desperate for heat, just run the oven with the door open. I mean, that's depends I mean, on what kind of oven you have, though. Yeah, a gas oven, don't do that. Electric. Right. But like if, it, if you have an electric oven, okay. If you have a gas oven, don't do that either. If, if it, it, it's Florida, so I'm going to say it's not a gas oven. We don't have a lot of natural gas. I stuff. just I just don't want to make that blanket statement. Because the South, oddly, it's it's one of those odd things. The South, since we don't use heat so much, um, we don't have a lot of natural gas infrastructure in a lot of places. It's most heat is electric down here, but regardless, they his probably what happened was his neighbors and the the building manager probably said, "You want a space heater or something?" Said no, nah. and then three a.m. rolls around and everybody's asleep after they'd offered him a space heater. He's like, "Well, I'm cold. Ah, fuck it. Let's just set some shit on fire. It'll be fine. I'll open the window." Yeah, you know, the smoke will get out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Indoor fire is almost never the answer. Unless I you... almost because, you know, fireplaces are a right. thing. We designed a hole just to put the fire in. We designed an apparatus specifically for indoor fire. Barring that, indoor fire, not the answer. No. You can't just say, well, it's fire time. No, especially it's very rarely fire time. Especially I have to tell Dan that all the time. <laughs> especially, and I cannot stress this enough: if you're renting, yeah, and if you're in an apartment building with other people on the other side of the wall who might also be affected by fire time. What the hell, man? It's not, you are not a caveman. That's right. Just oh, now I'm thinking of Tom Hanks and Castaway. I made fire. <laughs> you did. You made too much of it, though. And you, now you're in jail. Yeah, a little less fire would have been great. They do probably have central heating, though, so. That is true. Jail will be warm. Yeah. Uh, finally, speaking of people going to jail, oh, these idiots. Oh, huh. they almost, they, you know what? It kind of worked, I'm going to say about what they pulled here. It, it kind of worked. Men use forklift cherry picker to steal two ton safe from when at tag agency. Now, you're first you're going, wow, really? But wait, why are they in prison wear? Well, we'll get to that. Did something go amiss? Two men are accused of using a forklift to break into a tag agency to steal a two-ton safe. Deputies were called to the tag agency in Winnet near the beginning of December after employees discovered the break-in. The front door, the glass is completely busted out, and the crowbar they used to try to pry the door open was on the ground. Inside the agency's office were trashed, uh, driver's license machines broken, and walls torn down. They went there for a good three, three and a half hours. They used a forklift to get in the back door and pry it open. So first off, they couldn't get in the front door with, with, with a crowbar. So along the way, they managed to get themselves a forklift, and they smashed their way in the back door. Like you do. They then used a cherry picker from the connecting business, Winnet Tractor, to drag the safe out of the building and onto a white Chevy truck uh, they were driving. 
Now, I want to know how they get that thing in a cherry picker. Because, all right, it, it, for those of you out, out in, in other parts of the, the world who don't know what a cherry picker is, if you've ever seen a dude up in a, in a bucket, up in, uh, way up in the sky, in one of those car, in one of those uh, trucks with the arms on it, they're, they're in the bucket, that's a cherry picker. Yeah, it, uh, it looks or, like a hook ladder with a bucket. Right, or a bucket truck or whatever you want to call it. So I want to understand how they use the cherry picker. Yeah. Because that's I am struck by wasn't this the big heist plot in Westworld? Yeah, the one to drag it out the yeah. They just dragged the safe right out of the brothel. <laughs> Did you get this plot from HBO? There were over 157 <laughs> tags taken and probably a hundred more decals. What kind uh, of tag? What are we I, talking about? Uh, tags? Uh, car cars registrations. Oh, okay. Uh, also in the safe were laptops, collectors' belt buckles, important papers, and binders full of blank checks for when at Tractor. Collector belt buckles? <laughs> I I don't understand that one, but it's Florida. I so guess that's the thing I should no, get used it's, to. Right? It's Oklahoma, actually. Yeah, I moved to the West. There's currently a big livestock show in town, so that's the thing I should get used to, I We're guess. getting to the best part. A couple days later, the safe was found by the side of the road, broken into and empty out. It was still sitting in the truck bed, but the rest of the truck was gone. With the safe being heavy, when they tried to pull it back out of the truck, it pulled the tailgate off. So now we're looking for a white Chevy truck with no tailgate. Not long after that, the truck was involved in a pursuit with Dustin Adam Hoots, allegedly in the passenger seat. Dustin Adam Hoots, that's a name. He escaped that time, was picked up later in Johnson County on a different charge. Also in the Johnson County jail at that time was Adam Black Hamilton. Hoots had a running buddy, apparently an individual can't do anything by himself, so he had somebody with him. That running buddy of his was also in the Johnson County jail. He was already in jail. Here's the best part. Uh, Deputy Wells interviewed both men, during which Hamilton allegedly told her he hasn't been in Winnet since high school. But the deputy found out he had been wearing an ankle monitor during the time of the theft, so she contacted his parole officer. Honey. <laughs> Honey, if you're going to do crime, don't do it while you're wearing a GPS. <laughs> <laughs> do you not understand why they give you the... It's not like... The, 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 the ankle monitor is not just there. It's not like a modern ball and chain. It's not make, no. to, It's not to make people look at you and go, oh, you were bad. That's not right. what it's, it's for. It's not just to inconvenience you. It has a function. It does things. <laughs> like track your fucking location. And if you just happen to be in the same place that was robbed with a forklift, they might have some questions for you. I ain't been in Winnet since high school. Uh, yeah. Um, no. We got it on the computer. Oh, no, that wasn't me. I loaned that to my friend. <laughs> you loaned your ankle to your friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you need to borrow it. So I loaned it to him. <laughs> Oh, my. oh, so, honey. So I don't even understand how much money they got out of this, but I hope it's enough. To, was it enough to fix the truck? Apparently not. Was it was it enough to just be in the middle? Oceans. Oh, OK, Oceans 11 brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like, how are you driving around in that truck? Did you think nobody would notice? <sighs> Not exactly the crime of the century here. And, uh, they, they got it's the more like Oki's Eleven. Oki's Eleven, yeah. They got the, the 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 freaking cherry picker. What? I bet you anything. They just tied a chain to it and yanked it out of there with a cherry picker because it's a big Probably. truck. And just let it hang. <sighs> Obviously, they did not plan this at all because the first tactic was trying to go through the front with crowbars. Then what you were you gonna do, geniuses? Were you gonna carry the two ton safe out? Just I, I, I'm betting that they were hoping to open the safe there and just abscond with the loot. Uh, <sighs> license plates, license plates, and collector belt buckles. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we can retire. 
know, <laughs> and leave this life of crime. <laughs> uh, and the one guy's the mm. one guy's mugshot is just perfect. It's like, oh shoot, I don't know. <laughs> so you're gonna have plenty of license plates where you're going. Yeah, you'll be making them. You'll, you'll your pick. It's going to be how it's made, the home version, because you're going to so live where they're making them. Place to choose from. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, plan your crime. Yeah. Because if you don't, well, the devil's in the details, and also in plan, being an plan idiot. Plan your escape. Mm -hmm. Plan your egress. Know if there's a fence you're going to get trapped under. Yeah, that's Plenty. another one. If if you're gonna break into a place, um, you can't just wing it. That that's you can't just freestyle it. Don't break it. Don't go into places you're not supposed to be without an exit strategy. Um, we have learned that just because it's cold does not mean the answer is fire. We are. I think it would be right, but no. We are a post-industrial civilization. We have other options. Yeah. We we have so many different ways to generate warmth. We have warmth. We have electrical. We have artificial fire now. We have chemical. You just get a chemical. You get like a little pack. You squish it, and suddenly it's warm. You put it in your pocket. It's amazing. We have blankets. We have blankets. Blankets are great. We have blankets with electricity in them. Yes. No fire. Um, we have learned that uh, climate change means watch for falling iguanas. Or iguanas. If you see a falling iguana, catch them and put them down softly. We've learned that <clears throat> you're never too old not to know things. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that weirdly comforting? You're never too old to be a dumbass. And uh, finally, we've learned that there is someone tonight, the Associated Press, whose life goal has been completed. <laughs> they can die happy. They finally got that big bottle of scotch they've been saving for 20 years out of the desk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To celebrate. Yeah. And some, some dudes over there is like, Jack, you going to look at the, the impeachment? It's like, no, no, Dave. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've climbed my mountain. Yeah, I'm just going to savor this. And then the bummer is they realize they don't even like scotch. 